hello everybody. Thank you for taking some time to join us this afternoon. Just to introduce ourselves, my name is Samantha Renna. And my name is Vince. We're dietetic interns in the nutrition division at Stony Brook University Hospital here on behalf of the Healthy Libraries program to talk about how you can make sustainable eating easy and fun. So Stony Brook Medicine's Healthy Libraries program is a partnership with public libraries of Suffolk County. The Suffolk County Cooperative Library System Outreach Services Department is supported in part by the American Heart Association of Long Island. The program is an interdisciplinary team of public health, nursing, and social work students whose aim is to provide evidence-based health information screening and case management to diverse community of patrons in the public library settings, refer patrons to promote access to appropriate health and social services programs locally that will address their health and social support needs. For students to experience an interprofessional team and demonstrate the core competency based on the interprofessional education collaborative. So today for our presentation, these are just some learning objectives. So at the end of this pre presentation, participants should be able to define the following, sustainability, reduce, reuse, and recycle, understand their relationship between sustainability and food systems, be able to locate resources for local farmers market, start growing their own produce if they desire, understand the nutritional benefits of local and homegrown fruits and vegetables, and identify other ways to integrate sustainability into their lifestyle. So, what is sustainability? Sustainability refers to behavioral and purchasing practices which focus on reducing waste and pollution. So the goal of sustainability is to maintain the Earth's resources so that we can keep the planet healthy for future generations. So a key concept of sustainability, which you may have been exposed to before, is the term reduce reuse, recycle. So reduce refers to reducing the amount of products that we buy. So only purchasing what we truly need and avoiding excess. Reusing refers to reusing items whenever we can instead of throwing them away. And recycling, of course, refers to disposing of things in a way that allows them to be repurposed. So for example, recycling, you know, your cans instead of putting them in the garbage where they end up in a landfill, just being conscious of what we do with what we are getting rid of. So we'll touch upon other examples about how to implement these principles later in the presentation. So how does sustainability relate to our food system? So our current food system focuses the majority of our agricultural efforts or the plants that we grow on crops like corn and wheat, which we use to feed livestock, which we are essentially animals we eat. So much of it is focused on producing corn and wheat to feed to animals like cows, pigs, and chickens. Um, most of these animals are not raised on farms like they once were in the past, but in mass amounts in factories. So these processes use many more resources like water, land, and chemicals like pesticides than what we would consider traditional farming. So how can we eat more sustainably? So when possible, it's helpful to eat food from sources as close to traditional farming as we can. So what we tend to think of when we think of a farm, right? Like a farmer who's growing their own crops, taking care of their own animals, as opposed to these mass industrial agricultural initiatives we have now and the factory farms. So that's helpful, which is referred to um, free range for animal products. So they're raised in a field rather than that factory and organic produce, which is fruits and vegetables, which are prepared free from chemical pesticide use. However, it's important to keep in mind that these products, so your, your grass-fed free-range meats and your organic fruits and vegetables, they can be much more expensive and also require trips to specialty grocery stores. So simply put, for most people, it's not realistic to do all the time, but that's okay because there are other small steps that we can take that actually make a big impact on the food chain without necessarily having to eat you know, organic and free-range, et cetera, all of the time. So one of the concepts, of course, that reduce, we want to aim to reduce food waste and therefore our carbon footprint whenever we can. So reduce your food waste by saving leftover meals, of course, um, and you can freeze foods to be reused later instead of letting them spoil. 
it's a small thing, but I, I think we've all been there where, you know, we leave something in the fridge longer than we should have and it goes bad. So it's just being conscious about these things. Um, buy only what you need and know that your family will eat. So buying in bulk can be helpful to reduce the environmental impacts of excess packaging, but only if you consume the bulk amount of food before it is wasted. So to give you an example from my own life, right? Take the ricotta cheese in the grocery store. Sometimes I'll buy that and you can buy the bigger one, right? Um, and it's, it's cheaper per ounce. And for a long time, I was purchasing the bigger one with good intentions of it's, it's cheaper for me, it's better for the environment because you're getting a bigger amount and that's less packaging over time. But every time I would buy it, almost half the container would go to waste because I would never eat it in enough time. So just picking up on things like that in your own life. And if you find that you're actually wasting the food in bulk packages, it, it might be more economically and environmentally feasible to buy only what you're actually going to eat. And then, of course, eating locally sourced foods can help to reduce your carbon footprint. And we'll elaborate that on later in the presentation. So reusing is also applicable to the food system as well. So you can choose storage for your foods, which are reusable, passing on plastic, or investing in reusable alternatives. So of course, it's an initial investment up front to save up to buy glass Tupperwares or reusable plastic bags instead of your disposable Ziplocs. It can be that upfront investment. However, along the line, you can save money as opposed to repeatedly buying disposable plastics. And you're also helping the environment. And just for any, anyone who doesn't know, if you can't find like say these reusable plastic Ziploc bags in the stores, you can find them easily online. So just something to keep in mind if it's something you feel might work for you. So recycle, compost your scraps. So did you know table scraps could break down into fertile soil? You can take foods that would otherwise just go into your garbage and then into a landfill and actually turn it into soil that can be used in your garden. So you can compost things like eggshells, coffee grounds, fruit and vegetable scraps, except one thing to note with that is you don't wanna use any peels, say like with your bananas, because they can have pesticides on the outside. So you don't wanna scrap any, um, compost anything with a heavy peel like that. Um, you can use grass and straw clippings, and then shredded cardboard, papers, things that can break down. And they say to have a four to one brown to green ratio. So you could use things like your cardboard and then use your fresher grass clippings and fresh produce in a four to one ratio. You want to avoid adding things that can attract pests. So that includes meat, bones, and fats. So vegetables that are cooked in oil, you wouldn't really want to use that like after you're cooking anything left over, just cook what you need and any scrapping can go into your compost. Um, there is a link here on how you can learn more about composting, but just to give you a general overview, you're mixing those things in a four to one ratio, and then it requires some heat. So like from the sun, usually people do the composting outside and also oxygen. So you essentially just turn your compost with a shovel every couple of days to help it decompose faster. So now we'll be talking about, we'll just discuss some tips to eat more sustainably. So there are changes that you can make um, to your diet that can help the environment. Um, growing your own produce and purchasing through like local sources, your farmer's market, or just any kind of organic market that you can find around your area. This can help reduce food, um, kind of be a food system environmental. So by growing your own produce or eating locally, we can reduce packaging, reduce air pollution, and cut back on greenhouse um, gas emissions. So power up your diet with plants. So deforestation is the clearing of trees, and the number one cause of de deforestation is agricultural. So you might be wondering, why is it bad? Well, loss of trees and other vegetation can cause climate change, soil erosion, fewer crops, flooding, and increased greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. About 80% of deforestation is because of extensive cattle ranching and logging for materials and development. So, so on here, we kind of just talk about some of the sources of um, non-animal proteins, but you, don't, you, do not, you do not need to eliminate um, meat from your diet completely to make an impact. 
simply by reducing the meat consumption can be beneficial. And treating meat as a condiment than a main dish, meat production contributes a high amount of green gas, green gas emissions, and it also requires more food, water, land, and energy than plants. So try choosing animal proteins such as nuts, legumes, tofu, tempeh are good, uh, are good protein sources. So most of us now have access to the internet or social media, and you can look up meat-free meals that are trending and try them out. And it's always a good thing to ease your weight into it. I'm not suggesting any like vegetarian diet or vegan diet. So incorporating a day, a day or even just a meal without meats or doing meatless Mondays, then go back to your regular diet. Right. It's all about making a conscious effort, but in a way that will actually work for you and be sustainable for your lifestyle. So let's start growing and start your own garden. <laughs> so seeds can be bought online or at local, local home improvement stores, and you can even find some of them at the grocery stores. So seed packets will have information about the planting process. You can start growing most seeds indoors in April and start planting outside when it gets warm, which is around mid to late May on Long Island. And when you're planting outside, just be aware that your plants need to get the right amount of um, sun. So a good rule of thumb is about 12 hours. It's always good to read the information on the seed packet. So just make sure to snap a picture of the packet before throwing it out, or just you can also find online resources. So preparing your supplies. So if you start seeding inside, um, there are, there are um, biodegradable seed starters that are kind of a friendly, more friendly option than the plastic ones. And these seed starters are biodegradable, like I mentioned, and will eliminate the transplant shock and it will actually help develop strong roots than your typical plastic, um, plastic containers. So some materials you will need are access to portable water, pots, topsoil, like um, Sam mentioned about the um, compost. Um, you may also want to get some reusable gardening gloves, a hand shovel. And if you have, if you have kids or you just like snacking on popsicles, you can also recycle those and use them as a plant identifier. So you know which plant you, you have. So on this slide, you can see some plants that you can grow comfortably in a small container. So if you don't have a backyard or garden space, a totally a small pot will be fine. Um, and you can put tomatoes, herbs such as basil, parsley, oregano, thyme. Um, and you can do some fruits or strawberries, cucumbers, zucchini, and leafy vegetables as well. Um, so even if you only have a porch or a windowsill, you can use your, um, you can plant herbs that can grow as long as it's getting enough um, water and sunlight as well. So the next thing is we're gonna talk about some garden plants that you can do outside or if you have a big pot. So these plants require large space to grow. You can grow them in a large pot or up top to grow them in the ground if you have space in your backyard. So you can plant corn, Brussels sprouts, beets, leafy vegetables, on the bottom left of the pit, on, on the bottom left of the slide, it's a picture of a corn and a pot. And on the middle, it's Brussels sprouts. And on the right hand side is actually a hanging pot where it's it is um a lettuce is planted on it. So that's a good way to um kind of use your space as well. Summer vegetables and fruits. So you can stagger the order in which you grow your plants to make sure the most of most of their harvest. Plants by harvest month are listed below. So the summer months that we listed June, July, and August. So on this slide, you can see that for June, you can get your the harvest season for um, beets, cabbage, kale, lettuce, onions, peas, rhubarb, and Swiss chard. And for fruits, your strawberries. And for July, You'll, you'll have your broccoli, beans, cucumbers, eggplants, lima beans, peppers, potatoes, zucchini. And for fruits, you'll expect blackberries, blueberries, cherries, peaches, and raspberries. And for August, when um, 
kind of starting to cool down a little bit and you'll get your collards, your corn, okra, squash, tomatoes, apples, and peas. And these are just the stuff that you regularly see in your supermarket, especially living around on Long Island where there's a lot of farms around. Um, and these are all the herbs that you can plant and be ready around summertime. And all these herbs can grow in a small plant holder and are actually feasible for new gardeners. So they are very easy to plant. And the, um, yeah, it's very easy to plant. And they can spice up your recipes and add flavor to your meals without adding empty calories or sugars. So nutrition benefits of homegrown produce. Um, fruits and vegetables are an excellent source of fiber, and fiber helps to slow down digestion and clear debris out of the intestines. They are a great source of vitamins and minerals. Vitamins and minerals helps our body to perform essential functions. They support health of our organ systems, such as our eyes, hearts, and lungs. And they contain a lot of antioxidants that can fight free radicals, which can be thought of as a damage to the body. Free radicals can promote cancer development, which antioxidants can help fight. And lastly, growing them at home without chemical further reduces the amount of free radicals, making your fruits, vegetable, and even healthier. And it's just fun to see your plants grow. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, so I want to touch upon eating locally and in season. So say growing the garden sounds great, but it's not something that you know, you think fits with your lifestyle for whatever reason, there are still ways that you can eat, you know, locally grown produce and in a way that makes the food system more sustainable. So to give a little more context, when you go to the grocery store, most of the produce that you're eating from the grocery store has been shipped hundreds or thousands of miles, like from places like California, Florida, Mexico. So a lot goes into that, right? All the greenhouse gases that come from these trucks, bringing it across the country. So if you're eating food that was grown locally near you, just right off the gate, it's already less of an environmental impact because there isn't that long distance travel for your food. So that's something to consider. And of course, if you're eating locally and in season when it's growing, uh, your fruits and vegetables are fresher, tastier, and can be more nutritious because as it's transported, your food can lose some nutritional value over time. So if you're getting it closer to the harvest, it's that much more nutritious for you. So buying locally not only supports the economy of your town, but again, helps to reduce those greenhouse gas emissions. So how can you find local produce? Finding your farmer can be done easily on the internet, um, which I see by Zoom, we mostly have access to, which is great. Um, so the Cornell Cooperative Extension is a program that has a list of farmers markets throughout Suffolk County online. Also Nassau County, if um, that's more convenient for you for whatever reason. Um, so you can just start by Googling Long Island Farmers Markets Suffolk County or visit the website in the link below. And that'll give you a list of farmers markets and generally has dates and hours of operation as well. So it's a very convenient resource. Um, some farmers markets accept EBT slash WIC benefits so if you're getting um, governmental supplemental nutrition assistance, um, some of these farmers markets actually accept the program benefits. Um, for example, with participants and seniors through the commodity, commodity supplemental nutrition program can purchase fresh food produce in farmers markets from June to November 30th. They can use some of the benefits towards that. The supplemental nutrition assistance program allows participants to use benefits at the markets by using their EBT card. Generally, you need an appointment with that organization within the time frame to receive the benefits. So if this is applicable to you, say if you're a WIC um, participant, you would want to try to get a, one of your recertifications within this time frame. So that way you can get the additional benefit. Um, and the Senior farmer, Farmers Market Nutrition Program provides low-income seniors with coupons as well that can be exchanged for eligible foods at the market. Um, and if you're interested in finding markets which specifically accept um, these benefits, you can visit agriculture.ny.gov. It has an up-to-date list of these markets and the locations and hours of operation. And then, of course, if you don't see one listed, you can always, you know, call that market and inquire. 
Another thing to be aware of, rather than um, going to the market per se, to the actual farm, is something called CSA, which stands for Community Supported Agriculture. So to give you a little bit of context, CSA, it's the same locally grown fruits and vegetables by your farmer, but what they do is they bring it to a pickup location. So there are CSA pickup locations all over Long Island, and they'll bring the produce there, and it's essentially a subscription service. You pay a fee for the season, and then every week or other week, depending on the service, you can go and pick up a box of locally grown organic fruits and vegetables. Um, so it's a great thing to consider, but there are some pros and cons will sort of weigh out, but it's just a good thing to know the option exists. So pros, all your produce is organic and locally grown. Um, the pickup sites can be very convenient. I know for me, there's one, you know, right around the block, whereas my nearest farmer's market is still close, but more of a drive. Um, and the subscription aspect of it assures a consistent supply and variety of vegetables so, and fruits. So if, you know, sustainable agriculture is really something you're interested in, going to that subscription service sort of keeps you accountable in a way. So that's sort of one way to think of it as a pro. So cons of the CSA are that it can be expensive, um, upwards of $20 a week. Um, and you don't necessarily choose what's in your box. Um, it's sort of a variety of whatever the farmer has grown, um, which again, you can sort of market it as a pro if you're interested in trying things you maybe haven't before. Um, a lot of CSAs prior to COVID, I, I don't know about now, but um, they would allow you, say if you got radishes in your box and you didn't like radishes, there would be a community share table and you would drop off your radishes. And maybe if somebody wasn't interested in potatoes, you would pick those up. Um, again, I'm not sure with, with COVID now how they're approaching that, but um, just something to keep in mind. There is a little bit of flexibility if you're not a big fan of what's in your box. Um, but of course, if you get something and you aren't a fan of it, it can result in unintentional food waste, which is sort of a con of the program. If you're not you know, getting something you, might, you and your family might not eat. Um, if you're interested in finding a CSA project near you, you can Google CSA Long Island or visit www.longislandcsa.com slash Long Island CSA. And it has a list of local pickup sites and you can learn more about the farms that are associated. And if you're interested in learning more about sustainability and how you can implement it in your lifestyle, we're gonna talk a little bit about that next. So here we just listed some title or books or recipe books that might be available through your public library. Um, so the first thing we um, recommended or saw that might be available is High Protein Vegetarian Cookbook, um, Vegan for Everyone, Third one is vegetarian dinners in an oven. So definitely ask your librarian for any other plant-based recipe books that you can use and potentially um, implement in your diet or your family's diet. Right, and again, that's not to say that you can't eat in a more sustainable way if you're not a vegetarian, not at all, but it's just a good way to get ideas if it's something you're interested in, you know, implementing maybe one or two times a week to start and just see how you like it. And since we're talking about sustainability and reduce, reuse, recycle, these, uh, these are some kind of uh, books that are good for children. So if you have any um, grandchildren or any children at all, you can have them read this and just learn more about the earth and how they can contribute. Yes, and of course, getting children involved in sustainability is a great way to get the interest up. And we want to make sure the planet's healthier for future generations. So definitely, if you have an interest, get any kids or grandkids, that ne nieces, nephews, any young kids, and get them interested in sustainability. And a great way is if you have a home garden, get them in the garden with you because they learn hands-on. So here are other ways to integrate sustainability into your lifestyle. So minimize use of non-renewable resources by turning off lights and um, turning off water when not using, like carpooling or walking to, um, to anywhere you want to. Um, go paperless whenever possible. Keep things in a shopping list on your phone instead of writing it down. Um, shop at thrift stores for clothing and household items. Um, many items are good as new. Purchasing secondhand saves these items from landfill and saves your money. Likewise, donating items that you are done with to charity or any thrift store can definitely give, uh, give them a second chance and pretty much repurpose your clothes that you're not using anymore. Great, so we're just gonna take another minute to go over the poll. 
one by one and see how you guys did. So sustainability best refers to, and the options were eating a diet with enough sustenance to keep you going during a busy work day. The concept of using only what we need and minimizing environmental pollution to preserve the Earth's resources. Power that is generated by green technology, such as solar panels and wind turbines, rather than fossil fuels, and eating an all-natural diet free from GMOs and pesticides. Now, some of these things do relate to sustainability, but the answer that best refers to sustainability is the concept of using only what we need and minimizing environmental pollution to preserve the Earth's resources. And 100% of you got that, so great. Okay, and then the next question referred to the best time to start an outdoor garden on Long Island. Um, the options were April, May, July, and August. The correct answer was May. Um, it's, and again, it depends somewhat on the plants, but generally speaking, um, some of them don't do so well when it's cold. And so it's generally best to play it safe and go for May when the ground is a little warmer and the weather is consistently nicer. Um, but you can start your seedlings indoors if you have a warm area that gets sun in April. So that's something to consider as well. Number three, a farmer's market is, and the options were where farmers go to buy the best organic seeds money can buy, an annual festival that celebrates the harvest of the season in fall, a business where customers can go to buy locally grown fruits and vegetables, and a hardware supply store where locals can go to buy the farmer's tools of the trade, like shovels, rakes, and hose for their home gardens. And of course, the answer, which 100% of you got, was a business where customers can go to buy locally grown fruits and vegetables. Okay, and the following question referred to composting. And the answers were composting is posting on social media to raise awareness about the environment, reusing food and other scraps to produce soil, creating a community run garden with your neighbors, or rotating the soil fruits and vegetables are in to make sure it retains nutrients. And of course, the answer was reusing food and other scraps to produce soil. Okay, and our last question, true or false, it is necessary to eat meat to get sufficient protein intake. And I'm so glad 100% of you put false because it is false. You don't need meat to meet your protein needs. It can be done with a plant-based diet or starting to put some of those plant-based foods into your diet. Okay, does anybody have any questions about the presentation? Okay, I did see addressed in the chat. Someone asked if the presentation will be posted later. Um, and for anyone who hasn't seen the chat and is wondering, yes, the presentation will be posted to the Healthy Libraries Program's YouTube page. Okay, so are there any other outstanding questions or comments, thoughts about sustainability or gardening? You can either shout it out or put it in the chat if you'd like. Okay. All right. Well, thank you all for attending. We appreciate your time and we hope that it was valuable to you. Thank you.